Hello travelers and welcome back to the Mars Parlor. So in today's nail video, we are going to be doing some ombre acrylic nails. Um, I'm using Butterlicious by V Beauty Pure as well as Snow Bunny by Kiara Sky. And then I'm gonna be using uh, my trusty Mia Secret clear acrylic to go ahead and encapsulate those. So I actually did not decide to start filming until after I did my prep and applied the nail tips and everything. Um, it you really didn't miss much that I haven't shown in previous videos, but regardless, I am doing a long square nail today. Um, I was just really wanting something with a nice amount of space so that we could do a very open nail art design. Set design today is going to be Lisa Simpson from The Simpsons um, with some stoner eyes going on and a little cute little um, accent, kind of like... I'm not sure, Zen Tangle or kind of like bandana print on a few of the nails as well, and some bling. It turned out so freaking cute. You guys are gonna really like this one, I think. Um, if you do enjoy the video, please, please, please take the time out to hit that like button, turn the notifications on, and hit subscribe. It only takes a moment, and you don't even have to pause the video. Not only does it mean a lot to me to see you guys appreciate my artwork, but it would also help the channel to grow so that I can put out more content for you guys. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. I am starting off with Snow Bunny from Kiara Sky, and I'm going to use that to lay a very thin layer, almost paint-like, which can be difficult with white acrylic, so you may have to do it just a little bit thicker. Otherwise, it can come off a little bit see-through and more milky white as opposed to opaque. But I am using that starting at the tip of the nails and uh, sweeping it downwards, kind of towards the free edge of our natural nail. Again, we are not building the structure of this um, with the white acrylic. We're simply putting down this and the nude base color so that we can encapsulate them that way you don't file into your ombre once it comes time for that and ruin everything that you just did. So something to think about um, when working with your beads is I used to work more on the dry side but now I do work a little bit more wet and that is because it is easier to blend the acrylic into the previous bead. Um, you'll want everything to be as malleable as possible so that it um, uses those self-leveling qualities before you're kind of finished with an area, if that makes sense. So for example, um, a lot of you beginner nail techs or uh, when I was back in my beginner days, a lot of the times after my acrylic application, there would be a visible, visible lines of demarcation between my beads. And this will happen if your timing between bead applications as well as your liquid to powder ratio isn't swift and coordinated. And by that I mean to work a bit more wet so that your beads can blend better into each other and that you can have the most time to create the perfect shape and also to minimize time between applying those beads so that you can have the most potential for beautiful leveling. All right, so now I am dipping into Butterlicious by V Beauty Pure and 
this is a beautiful nude shade it's um a bit more on the pale side than i expected when i ordered it but it is still gorgeous um the only thing is with this ombre that i was trying to do it was a little bit too light of a nude shade to really show off the ombre that um the way that it should have but regardless, um, we are going to apply that to the middle of our natural nail bed and then uh, push it towards the cuticle, let that level. The, I guess the goal is to um, manipulate your acrylic as little as possible with the brush. You want to let gravity do a lot of work. That way everything is a lot smoother and you won't detect as many brush strokes when it comes to finishing application. So since this isn't the top layer of acrylic, um, the rolls do apply a bit differently, but you do still want to have a nice clean cuticle application um, and have it nice and seamless at that cuticle well, because um, otherwise you can see all of the dents and bumps underneath the clear acrylic whenever it comes to that. And most commonly there can be patches of missing color around the cuticle if you choose to encapsulate without doing a fair job to the color underneath so when i first went into trying ombre all the years ago um i had the impression that i had to have both of my acrylics wet or malleable as i was trying that so i would kind of apply them at the same time i would blend both the beads together in the middle but um it just kind of went over my head to do things a little bit simpler um of course you want to lay down that color at the tip first uh usually white and then you're gonna want to um to create a nice seamless effect whenever you're brushing that upwards into the opposite shade uh it really helps to just kind of go for it a little more if that makes sense because i'd be a bit hesitant i would try to pat it a little bit here and there and i'd be too deliberate about it is the right word just brush it down the nail like any old bead and if you're worried about getting nude pigment on the tip um what you can do is dip your brush back into the monomer in increments as that bead dries so that you can dilute that pigment as it goes up the nail um making sure not to brush too heavily you'll want to have a light hand typically working with any asset of acrylic but that's just gonna help with again leveling so unlike the pinky nail this pointer finger took some more acrylic beads to fill in the cuticle area and the nail bed area um, so you'll want to continue to think about that as you're as if you're working from the free edge downwards and by that I mean that the nail will look much better and be much easier to file into shape um, by applying your cuticle bead on top of the rest as opposed to um, applying extra acrylic after you've already created that cuticle. I hope that makes sense. going into the Mia Secret clear acrylic powder and we are going to use the same old method for structuring the nail starting at the free edge to build that thickness and then working our way down towards the apex and creating that gradual slope down to the cuticle and since we already have that um, sort of a thinner version of that shape underneath, it is just a little bit easier to follow guidelines in this case. So something else that I struggled with whenever um, 
I was more of a beginner was this sort of part here, how to deal with the lip of the acrylic bead after you've placed it. Um, so I didn't used to want to brush downwards. It almost felt incorrect. I don't know why, but um, this is really going to help in terms of not having that ridge waiting for you when it comes to your next bead. Um, again, you want them to level together as much as possible. And I just know that whenever I would place the bead and just continually brush it in the same direction, um, it would gunk up the brush, it would create way too much texture in the bead. Again, you want to let gravity do a lot of the work. So um, you can either take the liberty of brushing it in the opposite direction, or you can go ahead and gently press the bead um, so that it can sort of melt onto the nail. This will make for easier positioning of that um, fresh acrylic bead for you to brush it in the direction you're needing to. Now I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the acrylic application and cash back up with you when it's time for filing. So this was actually the final use I got out of this Melody Susie drill. It is finally the end of her days and so we can all say goodbye to her in this video. I did get a new one. She's cute. She is chargeable, portable, um, and all that noise, but uh, I am gonna miss my Melody Susie drill. I, I really liked it. Um, of course I can get another one somewhere down the line, but uh, for now, I've just got to think a little bit smaller. So anyway, I'm going in with a finer drill bit um, to go ahead and deep bulk some of the thicker areas, go ahead and get everything a little bit more smooth and simple for the hand file. Um, I also like to take this drill bit around the cuticle as well and just kind of make everything a little less ridgy and look more flush. So if you are a bit new to using an e-file, it can be um, a little less recommended to do what I'm doing here and use it on the sidewalls of the nail because without the proper control, it can create all kinds of divots and stuff and kind of just ruin the structure and, and uh, just kind of destroy the nail a little bit. So of course it is up to you, honestly, no matter what level you're at with nail tech, you can use a hand file to um, 
debulk the side walls and the edges and whatnot but i do just like to go in with my e-file first because there tends to be quite a bit of overhang um a little bit more than i would like so i just take care of that it just saves a little bit of time whenever it comes to the finishing filing <music> So with my 100 180 grit hand file, I'm going to smooth everything out Make sure that my sidewalls and my free edge are nice and crispy looking um, Again, you want you want it to look like you used a ruler, you know, like that that type of vibe and on top you want everything to be the goal is to get as many scratches out as possible so that you can't see it through the top coat and everything just kind of fills in nicely. We're getting closer to the fun part, but we are going to start off with a nice smooth base by adding some VBD Pure Gel Base Coat. Um, this is going to make it a lot easier to create smooth lines whenever it comes to nail art. I love a good thick base coat. Um, so this is my favorite thus far and I would really like to find a less expensive dupe um, if anybody has suggestions actually I would love that but I just like being able to keep it shapely because if that material is too thin then it's going to flood into your cuticle wells and it's going to um, sort of like ever so slowly start to drip off the sidewalls of the nails if you know what i'm talking about so you end up having to run your finger along the sides and everything and uh it just kind of when you're trying to take care of all the nails at once it's like you gotta you don't have time to be going back and trying to take an alcohol brush around your cuticle like and then even then you can still get like this thin diluted layer of gel on the it's just a whole mess so i love a good thick base coat anyway now we're dipping into some model one's gel polish and this is a very cute set of jelly nude polishes i decided to just kind of paint that one nail because i wanted I know it defeats the whole purpose of me putting that ombre underneath but i just wanted uh an even base for the nail out i was going to begin here so i had an image pulled up in front of me um on my laptop and just kind of took a few looks here and there to kind of get everything as proportional as possible something that could be a bit easier is to go ahead and start with the color so like the yellow that i put in later you could go ahead and start that out with your shaping that way it doesn't matter where you're going on the inside of that shape you can just make sure that the outline looks right and then you can worry about actually getting everything lined afterwards so there isn't too much technique to this i feel like i say that a lot but there really isn't besides trial and error and having some good uh reference photos and whatnot but uh 
yeah i'm just gonna go ahead and let you guys enjoy the nail art and um might pop in here and there to to speak about just a few things I know that nail art can be discouraging for a lot of enthusiasts out there and um, I just it even whether you're artistically inclined or not so much it's a whole different field to um, create art on such a small area and to uh, reproportion things so don't beat yourself up too much trust me this is hella edited um, I, I had to go in for a few tries for like all of this stuff so just stick to it and eventually you'll get something that you're happy with and the next time you try it it's gonna turn out even better you just learn along the way so when it comes to getting that stoned look with the eyes um, what you'll want to do is draw the lash line um, a bit lower than you normally would so uh, almost halfway down that eyeball structure and because of the profile that she is kind of portrayed in in this nail art here I am adding a little bit of curvature to that line um, as opposed to if she were facing straight on on the nail you would want to just do a nice straight line and it'll give that perfect like faded look Characters like these are a lot more on the simple side and I feel like it's really, they still really like pop off in the finished result and of course, um, you know, these are iconic characters and whatnot, a lot of people will notice them. So I thought this would be a nice little sort of beginner's nail art tutorial or maybe sort of intermediate if you will. So this yellow shade that I have from V Beauty Pure, if I if I take the time to look at that number, I will put it up here. But it is a little bit more on the pale side, uh, more than I would have liked for Lisa. But it did end up working out. I went ahead and did a second coat, and that just made it a little brighter. So um, it did work out in the end. And I feel like on video, it looks it looks a little a little better. <laughs> So now we are going to be using some pink and some like 
just a little bit of red. This is more of like a muted red, uh, also from that Jelly Nude collection that I got from Model Ones. And this is going to help create the um, red eyes and everything. Um, so putting down the pink layer first, instead of making a mess of blending them together and everything, because it's a jelly polish it's a little thinner and i can just go ahead and line the edges as you see here and it gives the perfect effect now i'm just going back through and uh giving her some lashes adding in a few of the finer details and touching up some of that line work just to make sure that everything is as bold as possible Now using a white gel polish I'm going to fill in her pearl necklace and this just made the image come to life it is it's, it's it's gorgeous and the finished product is gonna be even better because we are not yet done with the nail art So I felt like the nail was a little bit empty on top and I didn't see myself wanting to add rhinestones to the ring finger. So I went ahead and painted the cutest little uh, like heart shaped smoke ring above her. And I just went ahead and dipped my detail brush in a bit of alcohol and ran it through that gel just to kind of um, fade it out a little bit and make it a bit more smoke like. So this is where we get into the bandana print. Um, I'm using the same jelly nude polish that I used on the base of the uh, Lisa Simpson nail. And what I'm going for here is to kind of concentrate that design towards one corner of the nail tip and sort of uh, fade it downwards into the ombre. Okay, so now that we have finished with the bandana print and it's looking beautiful, we are going to do um, some blocking. So with that same nude polish color, I'm going to create um, two symmetrical rectangles. And this is kind of giving like, like cuff vibes, you know? And you want to have enough space on those to uh, mimic what we've got going on with the bandana print. Instead, we're going to use some white gel polish.
So I thought the harmony in the details of this set was just, it just kind of made the whole thing. I thought it was phenomenal. Let me, let me know if you guys feel the same way. So after completing all of the hand-painted nail art, we're going to go ahead and use some McCart rhinestone glue to add a little bit of bling in our blank areas. You can truly just take your liberties when it comes to rhinestone placement. Um, of course, you're working with gel, so you have the time to move them around and find something that you're happy with. But what I decided upon here was to do a little bit of cuff stacking, and um, it's basically just like a pyramid technique. I left out just a few um, numbers, if that makes sense, on the sides of the upper layers, and it just kind of, it, it all came together. It gave a very elegant and um, I feel like unique look. So now I'll be using my favorite Beatles gel top coat to finish everything off. And um, I'll just say that this is probably one of my favorite sets that I have done. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Maybe you learned a thing or two about some nail art. And uh, make sure that you're subscribed, leave a comment, and make sure that you like the video. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and safe travels back to Earth. Peace. Mm -hmm.